What's going on guys? I am back with some more educational content to help you guys get better at Rocket League. And today I'll be talking about the 10 best Rocket League drills to make your mechanics better. No matter what rank or how good you are at Rocket League, there's always room for improvement when it comes to mechanics. You could have the best positioning and game sense, but when the ball comes near you and your fingers literally can't do exactly what you want to do, then you need to work on your mechanics. All the drills in the video can be set up by anyone on any console of any rank. All these drills are intended to be repeated a lot to help you learn difficult hand movements and eventually get them in your muscle memory. And towards the end of the video, I'll give you guys some specific training routines you can follow. But for the most part, the more time, effort, and focus you put into these drills, the faster your mechanics will skyrocket. On the topic of staring at your screen, trying to get better at car soccer all day, you gotta make sure you keep your eyes in good condition. I've upgraded my PC and my monitor, but something I haven't really thought about is upgrading my eyes. I know it sounds crazy, but the sponsor of today's video is I Promise. So they reached out to me and I checked them out, and it's basically like taking a daily vitamin. They're not saying you're gonna become squishy muffins or anything, but they do promise healthier eyes, quicker reaction time, reduced eye strain, and better overall visual performance. The thing I really like about it is the ingredients aren't synthetic, so you aren't putting anything bad into your body. They use all natural ingredients that studies have shown do benefit your Eyes. Also, I Promise has products that have been used for years by professional athletes, including World Series winners and Super Bowl champions. And it's NSF certified for sport, meaning it's ensured that the supplements are safe and 100% legal for athletes to use. At the same time, the Screen Shield Pro Vitamins, which are one of their newer products, are specifically made for esports, and I really don't see any downside to trying it out. So try it with me. I'm gonna be trying this for three months, and they're letting me give out a huge discount. So if you use code MUSTY at checkout, you can try something healthy and support me at the same time. So I'll be keeping you guys updated in future videos and this is definitely a super good deal for the value you're getting. So with that being said, let's get back into the video. So drill number one is bounce dribble circles. This one along with the next one should really help your 1v1 offense. A lot of the people that I coach only ever really try dribbling the ball on top of their car. I don't really have anything against dribbling the ball on top of your car, but a lot of the time bounce dribbles can make it much harder for the defender and give you more offensive options. So this drill can help set yourself a mechanical foundation and it can help become a building block to make it easier for you to master other mechanics. So to start it off you either want to be in free play or you want to be in a private match by yourself and you can have unlimited boost if you want but I recommend using a normal amount of boost to make it more realistic. First you just want to hit the ball in any direction pretty soft and you want to get 180 degrees behind it and pop it up to create a bounce. After you bounce it you either want to continue the dribble to the left or to the right only. You can see in this example I chose to go left and the goal of this drill is to do this as long as possible and get as many bounces in a row as possible. It may look pretty simple, but it actually is quite difficult, even for pretty high level players. A lot of lower level players might consistently get 2 to 4 on their first time, while higher level players might get 5 to 7. The goal to mastering this drill is to barely move your car in the opposite direction right after you hit it. If you do that correctly, it allows you to have much more space for the next bounce. Notice how every time I hit it to the left, almost as I'm hitting it, I'm already moving to the right to get ready for that next bounce. You want to be doing both both clockwise and counterclockwise circles to get equal repetition. The goal of these is obviously to do as many as you can, but another thing you also want to be doing is keeping the ball as close to your car and getting the softest possible touch you can. The softer the touch, the closer it is to you, the further away it is from the defender, and the more options and the more advantages you have on the defender. Drill number two is very similar to drill number one, and it is bounce dribble zigzags. You start it the same exact way by touching it, getting 180 degrees around it, and starting at the initial bounce. But this time, after every Every touch you want to be alternating which side of the car you hit the ball with. I find this one to be a little bit harder than the first one, but regardless of which one you're doing, your goal is to get more bounces than you did the last time. So if you can only get two bounces in a row, go for three. And if you can do 30, then go for 31. Always keep trying to challenge yourself. That's the goal. For drill number one, if you do it right, you're not really going to run into any walls. But for drill number two, there's a good chance you're going to end up right next to a wall and you can do one of two things. You can just drop the ball and stop what you're doing and restart the drill. Or or you could keep the bounces going and do a few bounce dribble circle touches just to start turning the other way and continue the zigzags once you're facing the other side. For drills 1 and 2, you should be in car cam and you should be using boost and power slides sparingly when you need more or less space to get to a bounce. Drill number 3 is basically just playing wall ball by yourself. This drill can really help with getting those half volley clears and shots from the ground really consistent. Chances are, in pretty much every game you play, this situation is going to happen. For this drill, you can be in free play or in a private match with unlimited boost and 
you want the ball to be starting off at the kickoff position. And you want to be hitting the ball from the side of the field so it hits the side wall on the opposite side. After that, you want to be turning your car to the opposite side of the field, and once the ball bounces off the wall and the ground once on that second ground bounce, you want to be clearing it back into the same wall. You want to make sure you're making contact with the ball right after it bounces up to get the best contact for the half volley. This one is super useful because not only are you learning the proper mechanics of a half volley clear, but you're also learning the turn beforehand, which makes it much more realistic in game life. Also, no one of these bounces is going to be the exact same, so you got a lot of variation involved. And even for Grand Champs, this one may be quite relaxing, but it's really good to do before you play to get your turns exactly how you want them to get your clears consistent. Obviously, the goal of this is to do as many of these as you can in a row. You'll notice if you keep getting high and hard clears, the drill will be easier for you, but once you get that one soft clear, it's tough because you won't have a ton of time to turn back. For the next two drills, you're gonna need a partner, so make sure to pick up a buddy that's also on the Rocket League grind. Drill number four has to do with kickoff consistency, and you'll find it to be most valuable for 1v1s, but there's nothing wrong with having a good kickoff in twos and threes. You wanna hop into a private match with your friend with no mutators, him on one team and you on the other team. You wanna set it up just like a normal 1v1. But instead of playing the game out like an actual 1v1, you just wanna focus on who wins the kickoff. Whoever wins the kickoff gets the free goal. And my definition of who wins the kickoff in a 1v1 is if you can get the ball to bounce on the other side of the field. So basically, if the ball lands on the orange side of the field, you let the blue player score because he won the kickoff. And if the ball lands on the blue side of the field, the orange player would get the goal because they won the kickoff. If the kickoff is super 50-50 and it just stays dead center, keep doing 50-50s until eventually one person pushes it to the other side. Like I said, when someone wins the kickoff, they get the free goal, so just put it in the net as quick as you can so you can move on to the next kickoff. And trust me, kickoffs can win you games even against better players, and they're not luck whatsoever. So if you want to check out my kickoff tutorial to know what it takes to win a kickoff or to try to replicate my kickoff, you can click the top right of your screen or the link in the description. The point of this one is to practice your kickoffs and get the most repetition in the shortest amount of time in a low pressure environment. And I would say play more 1v1s, but that takes a lot longer, you get less repetitions, and that's a higher pressure environment. So doing this drill is the most efficient way to get a better kickoff. I recommend making this a little mini game and doing first to 10 goals wins. You also need a buddy for drill number 5, which is the passing drill. This one's probably the least structured drill on the list, but perhaps the most useful one. So you want to load up a private match with no mutators except disable goal reset. So this time you and your buddy aren't playing against each other, but you're playing together. The only real rule for this drill is that you only have one touch. So if I touch the ball once, I can't touch it again until Linkuru touches it. What you want to be doing is passing between each other as fast as possible. You're not necessarily going in a certain direction or towards a certain goal, your only goal is just to pass it to each other as quickly as possible. The key is you want to be challenging yourself, you want to be keeping the speed of play at a maximum. You want to find some way, somehow, to consistently get solid passes to your teammate. That could mean getting a super soft layoff or banging the ball against the wall. There's no one way to do it. What you want to be doing as a passer is putting the ball at an angle where it's going to be in front of him and where he can make another pass off your touch. And what's just as important as a receiver, you want to be keeping your momentum up, anticipating a pass, and opening up for one. This can really help the mechanics of all types of passes, boost management, and even game sense. After a while, you'll start to see passing lanes beforehand and have better overall team chemistry. If you're getting in a rhythm and getting a lot of passes in a row and just feeling the vibe, feel free to keep the play moving fast by putting the ball into the goal. Disable goal reset will make the ball spawn in the middle right after you score a goal to keep everything moving fast. Regardless of whether or not you're actually trying to improve your mechanics, this drill is straight up so fun to do and I highly recommend it. Drills number 6 through 9 all have to do with aerial car control. For all these, you want to go on the Pillars Rocket Labs map with unlimited boost. And you want to be doing these figure 8 motions shown in this diagram around the pillars in the air. Drill number 6 is stage 1 of the aerial car control routine. You want to be feathering your boost, doing the figure 8s, doing whatever feels natural for you. You can go as slow or as fast as you want, you can do whatever types of turns feel really natural and are easiest for you. If you want to, you can slowly start making it more and more challenging for yourself by adding turns you're not quite used to. Once you can consistently do 3-4 to four full figure 8s around the map, it's time to move on to drill number 7 or stage 2 of the aerial car control routine. For this one, you want to be doing the same exact thing, but you cannot air roll. So for everyone that does this, it's probably going to feel a little bit unnatural, but the higher ranked players will figure out how to deal with it, and the lower ranked players will probably have a lot more of those blackout moments. That's basically where you lose control of your car because you don't know which way to move your fingers to keep it up straight. And that's completely fine. The point of these drills is to keep getting less and less of those and continue getting better and better car control. These non 
one arrow figure eights will force you to learn these really weird hand movements that you're not quite used to, especially the ones where you're coming onto a turn sideways or even backwards. These hand movements are essential for you to master if you want to know how to maneuver your car in a lot more in-game situation. When you can consistently do three to four full figure eights, you're ready for drill eight or stage three of the aerial car control routine. For this one, it's the exact opposite. You have to try to arrow the entire time. If you're just completely lost on this one and have no idea where to start, this is the main movement you want to be doing. Jump up, lean your car back, and start feathering your boost. And while holding air roll, move your left stick directly to the left or directly to the right. In this case, I chose the left. This is just the basic pirouette. The main movement you want to be focusing on is a cux twist. For a cux twist, instead of holding your left stick directly to the left, hold it down diagonally to the left. Same thing vice versa, obviously. If you're holding it to the right, hold it a little bit more down to the right to get that cux twist movement. So that's the main movement, and you may get down the bare basics of that, but for this drill, you need to know how to turn your car's path while turning your car's axis. This one might be super tough for a lot of you guys, but I guarantee you, if you put in the time, you're gonna get better at it. Slowly but surely, you'll end up teaching yourself these hand movements to do 180 degree aerial turns while holding air roll the whole time. If you can consistently do three to four figure eights of these, it's time to move on to drill number nine or stage four of the aerial car control routine. And for this one, you can do both aerial and non-aerial movements. The catch is, you have to be boosting the entire time. For the other three, you could feather your boost, so you didn't really have to think about that. But for this one, you cannot let go of boost. On all the other ones, I encourage you to make it challenging for yourself, but on this one, it forces you to make it challenging. This one forces you to learn some of the most advanced aerial movements, because you have to boost the whole time, and you can't hit the ceiling, you can't hit the ground, you can't hit the pillars, and you gotta do these turns. You can even see me in this one, how I don't look super comfortable doing it. That's because it's super hard to do. You have to teach yourself how to aerial not too high, and if you do end up too high, you have to teach yourself how to aerial down, and you don't want to go too far down. So yeah, definitely a lot of stuff to think about, and even for the Grand Champs watching, I guarantee you this one will give you some blackout moments at first, but keep doing it for a few weeks, and I can't teach you how to avoid those blackout moments, you have to teach yourself, that's the key. And I guarantee you, if you can do all four stages and unlimited figure eights on this particular one, you're gonna feel your aerial car control in-game get so much better. Drill number 10 really focuses on getting quality hits after you land on the wall. I've mentioned this in another video, but basically you want to go on Tokyo Underpass by yourself with unlimited boost. You want to start off with the ball rolling slow in the middle zone, and you want to take it up one of the ramps. And it's really important when you're right here, you don't want to jump, you want to let the ramp carry you to the wall. If you do it right, your car should land somewhere under the ball, and right away you want to jump off the wall and try to get another touch on the ball. This one can be pretty tough because you have to maneuver your car in lots of ways you probably haven't done too often before. You have to do a lot of air rolls and delayed flips, but this drill really helps with your speed and mechanics. This helps you get quick and efficient follow-up hits that are really useful in in-game situations. So I highly recommend this one, and this has really helped me personally. So that's it for the drills, but here are the routines I recommend. I recommend the light training plan for someone who doesn't have a ton of time to play Rocket League, or they can't play Rocket League every day. In five minutes, you'd want to work on half bounce dribble circles and half bounce dribble zigzag. Then move on to the pillars, and if you're really comfortable in any of the stages, do two full figure eights, and then on the stage you're not comfortable with, do that for three minutes straight. Then move on to the Tokyo underpass drill for five minutes, and if you do have a friend nearby, do the kickoff consistency drill first to five, then do the passing drill for five minutes. The hardcore training plan is for someone that wants to take this a lot more seriously, and they have a lot more time to play Rocket League, and they can play it every day. And when you're doing these training sessions, feel free to listen to music too, so you don't get super bored. So for this one, in ten minutes, you'd want to do those bounce dribble circles and bounce dribble zigzags. Then move on to the pillars and do four full figure eights on the stage or stages that are comfortable for you. Then on the stage you have a bit of trouble with, go at that one for ten minutes straight. Then do the Tokyo underpass drill for ten minutes, and if you do have a friend with you, do the kickoff consistency drill first to fourteen, and the passing drill with each other for ten minutes. I'd recommend applying the wall ball drill in between games to keep yourself warm. If you guys want to see a video on how to improve your general speed and mechanics, then you can click the end screen card here. The two drills from that video are mentioned in this video, but I guarantee you that video will still be useful for you. I mainly talk about the mentality of how to go about your free play sessions, but if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe here for more educational content. Thank you.